Hi to all of you and welcome to Atlanta Live. It's going to be amazing. I'm Pastor Wandalyn Stokes, Pastor of Deeper Life in Christ Ministries, and we've got a great program in store for you. The Songbird, traditional gospel artist, award winning Monica Lisa Stevenson is coming up. And of course, we've got Pastor Wanda Smith, and we have a special chef. That's right. Chef Natasha is coming and going to be our guest. So listen, stay around. Tell someone, spread the word, because it will be alive on today. It's Atlanta Live, but right about now, we're going to have a special anniversary message. Max Lakato will come and share a special message with all of us. Welcome. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful evening of song and inspiration for you. Happy anniversary to WATC and congratulations on a quarter century of ministry. Wondering if everything would be all right. God stepped in right on time. Brought that joy with the morning light. I got up. Yes. Yes, I do. I got a testimony. A roof over my head, clothes on my back, food to eat, and look at the shoes on my feet. Hey, call on him when I need him. He's never late, but he's always on time. Hey, and that's why I've got to praise his holy name. The world is ever changing, but God remains the same. Yes, I do. I got a testimony.
Monica Lisa Stevenson. I've got a testimony. I hope that groove just kind of worked you out. It was, oh my God, she's an amazing singer, anointed as well. Listen, we have one, a guest right now, who certainly has a testimony. Want to welcome to Atlanta Live, Pastor Wanda Smith. Ooh. Hi, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to have you here. You know, I, I said to myself, she's one of the hardest working women in ministry and the marketplace. Oh my God. You're just a phenomenal woman. I just wanted to tell you that from one sister to another, you're doing an amazing work. And I'm just so happy uh, for you and for the ministry. So now you are, first of all, senior pastor, right? Yes. Tell us about yes. your church and your ministry. So I am the senior pastor of Victory Worldwide Ministries. I just love saying the name. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that because of Christ, we do have, everybody has the opportunity to have Victory Worldwide. So the name of the church is Victory Worldwide. Worldwide. We are located in Union City, Georgia. Okay. Um, right off of Roosevelt Highway, 6033 Roosevelt Highway. And I just believe that we were anointed by God to be there and we're doing a great work for the kingdom. That's awesome. How is it being a female pastor? Uh. <laughs> How's that journey <laughs> been for you? <laughs> <laughs> so it really has been a um, up and down journey. Okay. But when you're with the journey with God, you take the wisdom that comes and you ignore everything else. Mm -hmm. Because what you have to realize, even as a female pastor, that the issues will come. Um, but if you are walking in your assignment, who cares about the, the title? Mm -hmm. So even if you take away the title of pastor, okay, I was still assigned to preach. Mm -hmm. I was still assigned to um, feed into the people of God. So fine, take away the title, but the assignment is still there. Yeah, so yeah. So what is the title of the assignment? Um, I'm loving it, and I tell you, so many women of God, such as yourself, um, <laughs> have paved the way. Um, to make this process a little easier because I can't imagine um, how you guys started. Mm. But to see your footsteps and to see how <laughs> God has opened doors, you're like, yes, Pastor, God did it for Pastor Wonderland Stokes. I know God to do it for <laughs> little old me too. <laughs> because he gives all of us victory Come daily, on, right? Yes. <laughs> Worldwide victory. <laughs> that is awesome. That's yes. awesome. You, you have a perseverance. You have uh, tenacity. Uh, what is it about your mom's life that has inspired you you and instilled in you that, that perseverance. And I think that is the word, um, the perseverance. Um, since I was a child, my mom was diagnosed with lupus at a young age. When I was young, I was maybe about five. And lupus, most people didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, and she almost died quite a few times. But I remember one occasion where they brought us to her hospital room. They brought us to her room to tell her bye. Mm. And I remember my aunt and them saying, don't cry because it'll make her feel bad. But I didn't go to cry. I didn't go to say bye because the Sunday before I went to church. Okay. And I put my Sunday school teacher aside and I just asked him, can you pray with me? And when he prayed with me, I took that same prayer to the hospital room. I didn't know what God could do, but I knew God could do something. Mm. Maybe two months later, my mom was coming out the hospital. Praise God. And then from that time on, she dealt with lupus, but every day she got up and went to work. She dealt with lupus and with five kids. Every day she made it happen. Wow. And you're sitting there with her as a child and you're saying, wow, my mom is awesome. So guess what? When you grow up, you got to be awesome, too. Right. You gotta, you, right. You, I got to, right? Yeah. So her resilience, it made me who I am. Her wow. resilience, it made me fight. And most people that follow me, the one thing they'll always say, in the morning, I declare victory daily. In the morning, I tell people, That's oh, good. God did it again. He gave us another day to live. Because my mom lived every day with lupus, with pain. She had kidney failure. But guess what? She lived. Hallelujah. And so I declare, I shall live and not die. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> and you are certainly doing doing the work of the Lord. Yeah. Was there ever a time that you were angry with God? Uh, let's see. When I went through a divorce. Okay. 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 <laughs> I think that was the biggest thing because I saw God work so many miracles. And so when I finally um, went through a divorce and God um, forced me to get to that point in my life, I was. I was angry with God. But I want to tell women of God and men of God, um, sometimes God allows things to happen. He even gives us a little opportunity to be mad at him. Mm -hmm. but guess mm -hmm. what? We have to come out of that state. We have to say that, guess what? Why am I exempt? Why, mm. why, why should I be exempt from divorce? Why should we as Christians be exempt from cancer? Mm. Why should we be exempt? Look, we are the ones that should be able to say, if you held up the bloodstained banner, I can do it too. Mm. Because guess what? I got God on my side. And so though I was angry with him a long time, at first I was angry with my, my ex-husband. But then God told me, your problem is not with him. It's with what I did. 
mm. is what I allowed. And so I had to go back to God and get in the face of God. And guess what he did? He strengthened me through it. He gave, he reinvamped me. Wow. He showed me who I was. And I, I, didn't, I had no idea who this person was. I, wow. Everything that's inside of me, I had no idea it was inside of me. And I believe that no matter what your frustration is, God allows it to happen for a reason, but you got to let your faith bring you through and watch God show you who you really are. Ooh. Yeah. And I don't know sometimes if we like that picture when he shows us who Ooh. we really are. <laughs> <laughs> because then he expects us to do something with right. who we really are. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Because a lot of people, now I, I think it's very good that you're talking about being angry with God because people get angry with God because of sicknesses, because of things just not working out, uh, marriage, other types of relationship, you know, all those types of things. But what do you advise people to do that may be watching right now and they're experiencing those moments of anger with God? What do you advise them to do? I will advise anyone, if you find yourself in a place, first acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. Don't deny it. Acknowledge it. God, I am not happy with what you've allowed to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy that you took my child. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy that you allowed my, my marriage to end. I'm not happy that I'm in a bad situation. But God, though I'm not happy where I am, I'm going to come back to you for my prayer and my power. And so when all of this shifted, I went back to prayer. God had me to start a prayer line. In the midst wow. of my hurting and my breaking, God had me praying. And there were people inboxing me saying, can you pray for me? And I'm saying, I'm broken. Listen, that <laughs> prayer was a prayer with tears in it. But God told me to tell me my power was in my prayer because all prayer is is a conversation with God. So if you're angry with God, what would you do if you was angry with a friend? Mm -hmm. You would tell them. Yeah. You'd have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. That's how God works. God is so Good. graceful. God is so merciful. Yes, he, he is. He wants to hear our cry. He wants to hear. He knows we're not going to be happy with all of his decisions, but he loves us so much that he gives us that space to be angry and talk to him at the same time. Isn't that why Isn't it good? Oh, all he says is, don't leave me. Stay and talk to me. Just That's stand. right. Yeah. So That's I, good. I, I, my prayer brought me out of my anger. Oh, wow. I had to just That's pray good. about it. That's good. So were you in church, involved in church when you were married and, and, uh, um, and, and then raising a daughter? Definitely. And so I actually have a book coming out um, okay. in May of 2021 um, because the book talks about I loved her more than I disliked him. Mm. And it talks about allowing God to get glory even in a divorce. Wow. And I want somebody to know that okay. God can get glory in your story if you let him. Mm. It's a story. You can't, you can't rewind it. You can't redo it. Life is life. Yeah. Life happens. But there's a story in it. So let God get glory. I I'm so imagine me. I was a first lady. So imagine wow. me being a first I was employed by the church. So imagine me being a first lady. The divorce taking place. I now don't have a job. Mm. I don't have benefits. And so all of this is happening, and I've got to deal with it with a daughter in my house. Mm. And so I've got to ask myself, God, how do I deal with this? And God said, pull from your mother's strength. Pull mm. from what I showed you, wow. the miracle working power. Your mother got up and made it work. You don't know, you guys never saw the tears, and my daughter never saw the tears, but God said, make it work because one day she's gonna have to say, my mom was resilient. One day she's gonna have to say, God brought us out of this. One day, and I couldn't make God look bad because I need her to one day depend on God. And I want people to know when you go through hell, you got footsteps behind you. Mm. And they gotta know when I go through this same hell, the same God that brought mama out is gonna bring me out too. My and God. So, yeah, I was a first lady. But guess what? God said there's more in you. And it was, I just didn't know it. Wow. I just didn't know. And, and now you, you've come into your own. Uh, and, and so now senior pastor, uh, CEO of an accounting firm, and then in real estate, and, and still a mom, and soon to be author. How in the world are you able to do all of this and just keep it going? Because there's an oil and an anointing on your life. Uh, how are you able to do all of this? Really, the biggest thing is when you finally walk in your passion yeah. and you have peace, God keeps adding things to your plate. But when he adds them to you, he gives you the favor and grace to take care of them. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, just because you're a female, you can be a mother in ministry 
and go to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. We have labeled ourselves, we are one women wonders. We're not. Mm. There is so much inside of us. That's right. There are so many gifts inside of us. I say, God, don't let me take one gift to the grave. Mm -hmm. Not one gift. That's you right. Use every gift inside of me. And so it's about managing your time. It's about making sure I'm going to do a little here and a little there and a little there. So motherhood is my pride and joy. Motherhood comes before my ministry. Mm. My ministry becomes before my marketplace. Mm -hmm. And then and I'll put all of it together, then I find me. Right. So I have to figure out how to work that balance. <laughs> and I make sure I do all of it. But I love um, real estate. And so I jump into real estate. I had an accounting degree because mm. my mom made me stay in college. Okay. I didn't know I was going to need this accounting degree <laughs> after my divorce. I had no idea. Wow. I had no idea I was going to have to rely on this degree. And so sometimes God puts us in situations and we don't think anything about them until God brings you full circle mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you say, oh, <laughs> that's why you made me stay there. Or that's why you made me do that. So it, it, it all worked out, and I, I just find the grace of God. And every morning I'm at, in God's presence Thank and say, Jesus. what do we work on today? Yes, yes. What do we work on today? What are the keys to success? What would you say are those keys to success? The keys to success first is prayer. The next key to success is planning. And the next key to success is executing. Mm -hmm. You got to pray. It's communication. You don't want to be out of God's will. I reached a point in my life and I said, God, I don't want to be anywhere you're not. Mm. If you're not, you may, if the money is there and you're not there, keep the money. I need to follow you. Mm. And a lot of times we go after the money and not God. But if you have to go after God, God will bring the money. God will show you where the money is. So it's about communication with prayer with God. God, I'm praying to you. Tell me what I need to do. And then it's about preparing. When God tells you, guess what? Then you got to go prepare for it. God is not going to bring a job to your door. God is not going to bring Boaz to your door. Mm -hmm. God is not going to bring that business to your door. You've got to prepare for what God just talked about. Mm -hmm. And when God tells you to do something, pull out a little pad. Begin to write down. And as you're writing down, watch God talk to you. Mm -hmm. As you're writing down, watch God drop people in your spirit to say, call this person and call that person. That's and so you've got to prepare for it. But then once you prepare, you got to execute. That's Preparation right. Preparation without execution is lazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just bottom line, it's lazy. Bottom line, it's bottom line, yeah. lazy. But I promise you, if you focus on those three items, there is nothing you cannot Hallelujah. do in God. And God is not a limited God. That's right. That's why when we, when God called us to be pastors, yes. he said, I will pour out my spirit upon my sons and my daughters. That's God's right. God's spirit is not limited. Mm -hmm. So you can't limit it, God, on how he poured out his spirit to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know what God is gonna, where God's going to take me. Wow. His spirit called you to be where you mm -hmm, are. Mm -hmm. And so it's just about prayer, preparation, execution. Don't be very lazy. key. Don't that's be lazy. that's very good. Yeah. And and in a pandemic, can people thrive? They can thrive, survive. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're what? a living epistle yes. of it, right? What? Because we get victory daily, yes, worldwide. Yes. How can you thrive? I started my accounting firm in a pandemic. What better place? Guess what? People don't want to come to me. I don't want to come to you. So I figured out how to virtually do it. I'll send you a link. You send me all wow. of your documents. We don't come ever have here. to see each other. <laughs> and when I have to do, I, I'm also a life coach. And so I help women of God get from this stuck place That's to good. where they need to be. Because we as women of God, we need to know it's okay to be angry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay to cry. Yes. It's okay to be frustrated. And you need somebody next to you that'll let you pour out of them. And then when you get done, they mm -hmm. tell you, you can't stay here. Mm -hmm. Now I'm finna pour into you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to listen to you. But when you get done, you can't stay here. Mm. And so even in a pandemic, there are so many creative ways wow. that you can still. I think God set us up real good. Yes, he did. <laughs> you can have church from home. <laughs> there are so many. There are Work so, from home. Oh, this is wrong. <laughs> and guess what? And while you're working your nine to five on your job at home, you can also work a nine to five hustle mm -hmm. at home. That's right. There's so much more you can do even in a pandemic. Don't use that as an excuse excuse That's for good. not striving. Wow. Don't use it as not, an excuse. Do not. Don't want to hear it. Mm. What so, do you say to young women, young girls who, who are pursuing careers, who are in high school, in college, and, and wanting to do and be? What is your word to them? My word to them is stay focused. Okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of times with females, things come and they distract us so easy. 
Stay focused. Stay focused on what's in your spirit. You can do it. It can be accomplished. If God put it in your spirit, it's in your spirit for a reason. So do not minimize whatever God put in your spirit. But what I will say is stay focused. Sometimes you cannot hang with everybody. You can't sit with everybody. You can't sup with everybody. My daughter decided she wanted to do a food prep. And so she food, food preps. And guess what she does it? Online. And so I showed her how to go on the state of Georgia and open her own business. That's I good. showed her how to get her EIN. I went with her to open a bank account and so she opens up this business and then we show her how to do a website guess That's what good. these people they go online and they order for her it's something she loves doing she said mom what if nobody buys for me I said that means they that wasn't your audience mm -hmm. but guess what there is an audience assigned to you so if they don't buy go beyond them there's somebody right behind them That's right. that will buy but you got to stay focused stay focused on what God put in your spirit so even if somebody don't say and, and most of the time it's not your family Mm -hmm. We get caught up in that. Yeah, we, we do. We think our family, <laughs> our family and friends are going to be the first ones. To, no, not necessarily. <laughs> Go beyond them. There's this that's good. big world. There's wow, a that's just thing. waiting. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's it just It is waiting. waiting for our young girls. Mm -hmm. It is waiting for their creativity. Mm -hmm. It is waiting for the passion that's inside of them. Yes. But they got to stay focused. Block out mama, daddy. If they don't feel it, if you feel it, Push, 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 and go forward. Push yes. and go forward. Go forward. That's Sometimes good. I tell people, you got to determine: Are you a pusher or a pacifier? Okay, okay. And sometimes we have pacifiers in our corner. Yes, and we they do. pacify us. <laughs> and they make us comfortable. I don't need you to make me comfortable. That's right. I killed the pacifier when I was probably a year old. Mm -hmm. I need pushers. That's good. Need somebody that can say, I can see you there, and that'll help push me and not pacify me and make me comfortable. Wow. So our young girls need to stay focused and center yourself around some pushers. I love it. I love it. Pastor Wanda Smith, tell people how they can connect with you. This is a powerful woman of God. <laughs> So I would love for them to connect with me. So everything is I am Wanda V. Smith. Everything, my Facebook, my Twitter, my YouTube channel, which is there's a lot of encouraging, powerful messages there. Um, they can connect with me at I am Wanda V. Smith. On my website, they can also connect with my church from my I am Wanda V. Smith website. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much thank for sharing you. with us. Yeah, you are a jewel. <laughs> Pastor Wanda V. Smith sharing thank with you. us. Such an amazing woman of God, and we're just so glad to have you here. So keep much. shining, keep rising, keep yeah, doing what you're I like doing. That. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming up next, we've got this vocalist you just heard already, but she's coming back again to bless us in song. And I just love to hear her music. She's such a powerful, powerful woman of God, and she's been in the industry and in the music ministry. Uh, for years, creating and giving us some great gospel music. And so I want you to welcome again, she is Monica Lisa Stevenson to an entitled right there. Enjoy. <laughs>
right there with me. Oh, yes, right there. you, Jesus. Sometimes it's just the song you need to hear that God will be right there. And those of you watching right now, maybe you think that you're by yourself, but God is right there with you. As Monica Lisa Stevenson, a gospel recording artist, blessing us on today, right here on Atlanta Live. I want to welcome now our next guest. Uh, she's a chef and then she loves cooking, but you've got to hear her story. I want to welcome Natasha Billups. Hi, and welcome to Atlanta Live. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you here. Well, you love cooking yes. and you know and sometimes <laughs> now when we see ourselves here there's a story behind it yes yeah tell us about that story okay um so I love cooking uh -huh. and I would just be in the house cooking 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 making lobster um just steaks every night and my dad came to me and he's like Lobster again? <laughs> He's like, can I have a hamburger? Can I have, you know, something regular like meatballs? And I'm like, you don't want this gourmet food? So I have been posting on my Instagram and my Facebook page okay. the different dishes that I've been making. So I said, well, if you don't want it, Dad, let me ask other people if they want my food. And sure enough, as soon as I said, hey, does anybody want to order from me? Everyone was like, yes, we definitely want to order. We've been waiting to order from you. And that's basically how I got started. And I've been cooking ever since then. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's such a creative gift. And, and certainly we're seeing now a lot of people are like, how do you make this different? How do you prepare chicken or lobster or steak or whatever? Yeah. How do you do it different? Okay. <laughs> so... Um, most restaurants, say you go to Red Lobster and you get a lobster, it's just, you know, broiled. Um, I like to fry my lobster. Okay. So I do something in Frederick, Maryland that no one else does. Okay. So I like to fry my lobster and um, one of the dishes that I have today with me is fried king crab legs. Okay. I yes. can't wait. Yes. I can't wait. Yes. <laughs> secret out. I don't oh, want to let the okay, secret okay. out. Uh, so tell me about, and, and we're going to come back to that, but tell me about 
what happened after your marriage failed? What did you say to yourself and that, that, that kept you moving? Um, I guess, so going through my divorce, um, it was pretty much the worst thing that I ever went through. It was horrible, um, but it was something that God had me go through. So I'm divorced. And basically, I learned in that divorce to trust God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, and I was like, it's weird because at the beginning, during the separation, I kind of pulled away from God. Okay. And I was like, okay, God, you hate me. <laughs> like, my marriage is over. Like, this is all I ever wanted to do was to be a wife, to be at home cooking and cleaning and taking care of my yeah. kids. And now that's over. Um, so then I learned God, he gave me a strength and he brought me through the divorce. And from that point on, it was just like, okay, you're going to have to trust him. So that's just, I told myself like, okay, let me rededicate my life to Christ. Let me start over. Okay, God, I'm, I'm completely ruined. I'm all the way down here. I have no job. I have children, you know, I'm divorced. I'm moving back home. I'm gonna trust you and let's just start again. And um, he's, he's basically starting my life over. Wow, raising children, small kids, starting a business too. Uh, what has kept you moving forward? And you know, handling all of that? Um, one, I just, I don't know. Like, I know I wanted to do something. Okay. And as far as like my support system, I have the support. I have my mother and my father, um, both sides of my children, they have their parents, well, their grandparents. So, and their aunts and uncles and cousins. So I have tons of support. And just looking at my kids and thinking like, you know, I know that there's something that God wants me to do. I know I can be great at something and just trying different things, trying different things. Um, and cooking was one of the ones that kind of took off. Underground seafood? <laughs> Underground seafood. Where did that name come from? Um, <laughs> I, you know, it was part, Part of going through divorce for me was kind of hiding. Okay. So I lived, I moved back to Frederick, but I didn't hang around a lot of people. I just kind of stayed in the house and I tried to stay as low key as possible. And I thought naming it underground seafood, it was still part of me <laughs> hiding, but it was like, I'm underground, but I have this really good seafood for you. Um, <laughs> You know, but I'm still underground, like you don't know who I am, but here's some food. So that's kind of where the name came from, underground seafood. Like I was still trying to stay really low key. It piques really your curiosity. It's like, wow, is this underground <laughs> seafood? Wow, it must be something different and unique about it. Yeah, yeah. But have you always loved seafood? Have you always uh, you know, oh, loved? Yes. Okay. Oh, I have always loved seafood. I have always loved seafood. And it's funny because um, I cook lobster now, but a lot of people in my area, when they came to my wedding, one of the main things that they said was, lobster was the, I had lobster the first time at your wedding. So um, they kind of credit me for that. But yeah, I've, for forever, I've loved seafood. I think Marylanders can all agree. Yeah, we love crab legs, crab cakes. Yes. Yeah. There's... Real crab cakes. Yes, in, in real in crab Maryland, cakes. Virginia area. Barely any filler. <laughs> yeah. What happened with nursing school? What 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 came out of that? Um so before I tell this story all the way, I would like to say that I'm a really good student. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm an A B student, but um come November, when November came, it it hit me like I don't want to be in nursing school. Okay. I don't want to do this. So I went to my parents and my friends, and everyone's like, you worked so hard to get in nursing school. And I was like, yeah, but I don't think I really like it. And they kind of encouraged me, like, you know what? Keep going. Do nursing school, finish it out. So um, I finished out. You know, I think I got an A and a B, bam. January came, and I'm like, you know what? Let me just put my head down and see what it goes. I feel like I should leave, but I'm still here. Mm -hmm. So I had an opportunity to cook in Tennessee. And the day that I left to cook for, um, this would be my first big out-of-state gig in okay. Tennessee. The day I left was the same day that they dismissed me from the nursing program. 
Mm. So I made one mistake and they were like, that's it, you can go home. I'm like, really? Like the semester just started? They're yeah. like, no, you can leave now. So I left nursing school, packed my van up, well, my truck, and I drove to Tennessee and I cooked. And literally, I have been cooking out of state ever since then. Wow. Ever since then. I've been in um, North Carolina. Next month, I'll be in Florida, South Carolina, like, yeah, West Virginia. So you just, you're doing catering. You're uh, uh, preparing meals for events and, and for families? Yeah, so basically, they hire me as a private chef. Okay. So I come in your home and I uh, come in your kitchen and say you have, maybe you want to surprise your spouse or you want to have a brunch with you and your friends just because I come in and I usually come in with two other girls, but yeah, I come in and we cook right there and we set up all the food, we plate it everything and we clean up at the end yeah wow that is amazing and it takes a lot of creativity yes so <laughs> so it's more than just cooking but also with that culinary gift is that creativity to set the vibe for the mm. occasion where did that come from I don't you know so I have a big family okay and um Dinner time was always storytelling time. Oh, it was wow. always fun. It was always jokes, you know. And then for me, it's like, when it comes to the vibes, with good food, and like, people are happy. Yes. So like, <laughs> you're eating my food, it's good, you're happy, I'm happy, right, yeah. Okay, so it kind of sets the vibe and the mood. Yeah. And you know, a lot of families kind of come up like that, came up around yes. food. Yes. And, and, and it brings the family together. Yes. Yeah. So it was a big family, a big family thing. And then as far as like the creativity, oh, I just like food that looks good. Mm. Okay. I love food that looks good. I don't want it just to look like something you could get at a restaurant where we live. I want to give you a dish and I want you to look at the dish and say, you can't get that anywhere around here. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's my level of like expectation that I set for myself. <laughs> okay. So what, what's the key there to making food look good? Because I know it tastes good, but what's the key to it? Uh, different colors, making it colorful or? Oh, the key. Um, I guess you've got to have an eye. Okay. The eye. Um, you can make it colorful. You know, I do these uh, fruit displays that are really colorful. Okay. Everyone usually likes it. Yeah, colorful. And then um, trying to use the freshest ingredients. Yeah, using the freshest ingredients. Um, things that always spice up the dish. It's like paprika, okay. parsley. You know, even if it's something simple, if you put a fresh piece of parsley on the side of the plate, it's like, oh, now it's gourmet. Okay. Oh, let me slice. <laughs> oh, now it's gourmet. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna try that. I, I, you know, I love to make tuna fish. Oh, okay. So I'll yeah. just put some parsley on there. It's like, hey, family, parsley on there. This is gourmet it's, tuna. It's, it's gourmet now. You know, <laughs> put it on. You know, put some uh, fresh parsley on the side, okay. and then put your tuna there. It's gourmet now. It's okay. gourmet tuna fish. You're a chef. Put a little lemon on the side. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you got, got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Chef Natasha, wow, yes. this is amazing uh, because, you know, all of us, we, we, we cook or we prepare or we eat mm -hmm. all the time. And so learning and hearing you talk about it is, is just so unique and so powerful. And, and so do you take advantage of different little spices as well? Oh, yes. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. So one thing, I like sauces. Okay. I like sauces. So, um, and, and then just different flavors. So I have this dish, um, it's like a Thai curry sauce. Okay, This okay. red Thai curry sauce. But instead of just putting it on chicken, I, I use it on salmon. Okay, oh, wow. Sounds good, huh? <laughs> yeah, and before, like, I never would have cooked with coconut. I never would have, I don't drink coconut water or anything, but now I cook with coconut because I can, I know how to use it. Like, I put the coconut in the sauce with the Thai curry, and, um, Oh, people love it, and I love it. <laughs> well, listen, if you're becoming hungry, it's okay, because we all are. Yeah. And, and when we come back, you're going to be able to see some of the meals that Chef Natasha has prepared that's really going to make you go like, ooh, Atlanta Live, you are working me over 
here tonight, but it's really going to uh, whet your appetite. And so we're looking forward to that, you sharing. It's underground seafood. Chef Natasha, uh, and she's uh, all about preparing those dishes that not only taste good, but they look, look good. good as well. Yeah. And that's so very important because that appeases the appetite. So we're going to come back to you and we'll get, uh, we'll be able to kind of see and mm, I don't know if you'll be able to taste, but maybe we'll be able to taste, right? <laughs> we'll be back with much more. Uh, coming up now, I'm not ashamed, the award-winning electrifying Monica Lisa Stevenson. <laughs> to stay connected to her, get her music. It will continue to bless you. Now, we're here with Chef Natasha Billups, and of course, she is the CEO of Underground Seafood. Now, can you imagine what she's doing right now? <laughs> well, take a look. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, what do we have here? This looks delicious. Oh my God. Is that one of your sauces? Yes, it's one of the sauces that I use. You know, you chefs, you all don't give us your secrets <laughs> to your sauces. <laughs> 
But tell us what you have here, what you prepared for. Okay, so I'm gonna start you off with something that I love. Okay. So the first dish here is my salmon shrimp and grits, and it's also topped with crab meat. Woo! Yes. Woo and then I have um, my underground spring roll. It has crab meat in it, and it also has shrimp. And then how in the world do you get all of that in an Egg roll, you said? It's a spring roll. It's a spring roll. Mm -hmm. And so you've got all of that seafood in there, and it's dressed with your, your sauce. sauce. Okay, okay. And then the last dish I have for you to try is my fried king crab legs. I could not come to Atlanta without you trying <laughs> my fried king crab legs. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So you want me to try it now? Yes. Yep. Now, I'm from Savannah, so I know about grits, Ooh. and I know about seafood. All right. So let's see what we can do here. All right. um, audience, I, I really wish I could share this with you, <laughs> um, but mm, don't think so. Yeah. Let's see. That's grits. Yeah, you need everything. There's everything. salmon in there, there's salmon, crab, crab, there's shrimp, shrimp, onions and peppers. Okay, now you see it, right? Mmm. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. -hoo 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 -hoo. <laughs> this is good. I love it. I love it. You saw it, but now you don't, right? Now, what else do you have here? Okay, so and I'll take one of these away. So I have the underground spring roll. Underground yes. spring rolls. Let's see, oh it's my like God, look food. at that. Wow, okay. I've gotta be very nice eating nice. this. Nice. And uh, let's see, oh my God, this is so meaty. Yes, it has like shrimp in it, whole shrimp in it, jumbo lump crab, Wow. Okay, now you see it, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fresh. Yes. Mm. I made wow. it right before the show. Mm -hmm. So my Praise fillers. the Lord, praise <laughs> the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm, Thank you. Mm, mm, mm. Hit your mama. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is delicious. I wish I could really share this with you because I'm a giving person, but unfortunately, <laughs> we can't do that. <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? All right, so the last dish. This is my favorite in Frederick, Maryland. It's always requested. This is my fried king crab legs, and it uh -oh. has my sauce on it. This sauce is so... Good. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Food makes you happy. Food makes see, you happy. See, this is where the Food vibes come. Food makes you happy. And even when you can't sing, you can sing when you got some good food in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> See, Monica Lisa Stevenson, she doesn't need this in order for her to sing yes. because she's Bless. gifted and anointed to yes. sing, but because that's not my calling, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of this. All right, are we ready? Three, two, one. Mmm. <laughs> oh, Lord, you done made me kick my leg up. Mm. <laughs> My God, my Zion. Yeah. Mm. Is the show over yet? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is delicious. Oh my God. Thank Does it you. take you long to prepare these items? Um, I mean, it takes time. I'm mm. a lot of. Hallelujah. Time. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, Lord. It tastes good. And you know what? It's so funny that you're doing that. So, one of the things when I go out, and I cook for people and they try my food, even if they're not Christian, they come up to me and they're like, God blessed your hands. Mm. Oh. They, they ne may never ever acknowledge God again, but then they come up to me and they're like, oh man, God blessed your hands. Oh, wow. this is a gift from God. Yeah. Yeah, so, God bless your hands and this seriously. is a gift from seriously. God. Seriously, <laughs> seriously. This is wonderful because it's so creative, it's so unique and um, it's very tasty and the seafood is very fresh. Um, it's, it's not bready, 
my seasoned good, Aww. and um, it's just wonderful. Yeah. Uh, this is very unique. Let our audience know exactly how they can connect with you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it's got to be safe for your phone. How can my audience yeah. connect with you? Yes, I love it. I love it. I better stop acting. They may think something else is in this food, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, look. <laughs> so if you want to connect with me, you can find me on um, Instagram at Chef Natasha B. Please follow me on Instagram. Also, you can go to www.undergroundseafood.com. Um, if you want to book me for media or other interviews, you can email me at prredefinedmedia. Oh, prredefined at gmail.com. So, this is yeah. this is just so amazing uh, yeah. because you know sometimes when you're preparing seafood or any dish, you know it's like okay I do grits but how can I do it differently? You yeah. know you do seafood how can I do it differently? And so following you and even after tasting this, you know the, the uniqueness and and the creativity yeah. that you have. What advice do you give to to moms and dads who are like just in the kitchen all the time and what are some of the, just the key things that you would like to encourage them to do or change to just kind of spice up their meals? Um definitely look at other cultures and see what seasonings they're using. Okay. I feel like in our culture we can stick with the garlic, salt, pepper or seasoned salt, you know, but um, you know, just I guess just be open to trying other seasonings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just being open to trying other seasonings, incorporating other flavors, and experimentation. I experiment all the time in the kitchen, all the time. I'll see something in my head and I'm like, I wanna try it, I'll make it, and it's trash. That's fine. Try it again, change the seasoning. Um, yeah, just be open to experimenting. Now, is this one of your special sauces? And how did that come about from the creativity so, perspective? Um, from the creativity perspective, because it's you know it's orange, it's tasty, it's, yeah, it's, it's got very like tasty. a um, it's got a little sweet edge to it. Okay. Um, and and just a little soft spice, uh, so it's very tasty. So how does that creative part come around for that? Um, well, for this, I just want to say. I didn't invent the wheel. Okay, okay, okay. Got you, got you. But I know how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. I didn't invent the wheel, but I know what to do with it. Okay, okay. so um, I didn't invent this sauce, but I found this sauce and I mean, it's the best sauce that I feel like this thing is gold. So I use it on fried foods and it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. And it gives off a different taste on each one yes. uh, of these dishes. Now, here are some of the other things that you have kind of coloring it, but it gives it flavor. Talk to us about the uniqueness of using peppers, parsley, oh, okay. uh, you know, things like that to kind of enhance the flavor of foods. Yeah. Okay, so um, in this shrimp and grits dish with the salmon and the crab meat, um, I put cheese in my grits and I get them nice and creamy. And then I also like onions and uh, red pepper, which give it just like, oh, it's just another texture. And then sometimes I like my shrimp spicy. So bam, that's like another flavor. Mm -hmm. And then the salmon in there. And recently I started using uh, the crab meat. And I season the crab meat completely different than the way I season everything else. So again, it's another flavor. So the tomato and the green onion on top, it's like freshness in your mouth. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, it's not salty. You know, tomato is not salty. Right. And it's a bit of the onion, but it's not overwhelming. And you can Correct. also use lemon on it. So that's another flavor right there. Wow. Yes. Wow. And in the spring roll, there are also red peppers and onions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I try to use whole shrimp in it. So when people bite it, they get a whole yes, shrimp. Yes. You get a whole shrimp. So you know that like I'm giving you fresh ingredients. You can see it. Mm -hmm. Like you know this is a shrimp and it's jumbo lump crab meat in there. You can also use the lemon on that to enhance the flavor. Yeah, but with that king crab, I just fry that, and that's the show. You can you can enhance it with lemon, enhance it with the sauce, but that it still stands out 
like yeah it does it does yeah. and you seem like you like different textures going on the palette yes and that's, yes. that's, that's good and very important too. Look, I almost told you like, <laughs> when you were picking up your spoon, I want to be like, make sure you have um, red pepper on there and make sure the Girl, salmon is on there. Like, I want it all to go in. <laughs> I had it all on there. I want it all to go in. <laughs> trust me, trust me, I had it all on there. Yes. And, and, and listen, Atlanta Live audience, I wish, oh my God, I wish Aww. you could taste this. Mm. But this is simply amazing. You have got to stay connected to Chef Natasha Please. Billups. Tell us again how we can contact and follow you. Okay. So if you want to get in contact with me, if you want to book me, I would love to come down here to Atlanta. You can locate me on Instagram at um, Chef Natasha B. Um, you can go to my website, www.undergroundseafood.com. There's a box on there awesome. where you can send me your information. Um, yeah, and I'll definitely connect with you. Yeah. She will connect with you. Yes. And you know what I'm getting ready to do? I'm getting ready to finish this trip. Yes. Yes. And we have a good time. I'm Pastor Wanda Lynn Stokes, pastor of Deeper Life in Christ Ministries. Stay connected to me. Yes. WandaLynnStokes.com. Mm, 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 mm. Don't be a hater. <laughs>